Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Let's have some fun. Story inspired by Charlotte. I'm a 29-year-old man who originally is from England. So far, my life has been pretty normal. However, on a work visa program, I spent three months in California. Although many students have participated in these programs over the years, I believe I was the first to spend the summer working as a waitress and the sissy of a wealthy businessman. I had a reservation for a cheap, rundown hotel room in the heart of Los Angeles when I got to California. Even though I didn't yet have a job, I wasn't concerned because I had a lot of money on me. A few days after I arrived, I came across a sign for a cross-dressing club one night as I was heading back to the hotel. I had always been intrigued by the notion of dressing in women's clothing, but I lacked the courage to act on it. I finally made the decision to enter and look around. As soon as I entered, I was greeted by a group of stunning women who were all wearing waitress uniforms. They were dressed in French maid uniforms made of black satin with white piping. The uniforms featured a short skirt and low cut top, and they were worn with sheer stockings with seams running up the back, four inch spike heels, layers and layers of white petticoats to push out their skirts, black gloves that reached their elbows, a black choker, a mop cap, and a large, white, frilly apron tied with a big bow at the back. I must have stood there for 30 seconds with my mouth open. Even though I knew they were men, I was still in awe of how attractive they were. I eventually found the bar, and after a few drinks, I struck up a conversation with a waitress. She began questioning about me because I was clearly a foreigner traveling alone. I told her how I had always been attracted to the idea of dressing like her, but had never had the courage to act on it because I was 8,000 miles from home and unlikely to run into anyone who knew me. Plus, by this point, I had had a few drinks. To hear my story, Sophie immediately called over her friends. It turned out that the majority of the girls lived in a house together a few miles away, sealing my fate. I was brought back to their house to play dress-up after their shift ended. To gain courage when we got there, I had a few more drinks, and soon I was in a corset, stockings, white blouse, black pencil skirt, low heels, makeup, and wig. I was shocked when I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror because I had always assumed that wearing a dress would make me look more like a guy. Even though I was short, thin, and weedy as a guy, I had a stunning appearance as a woman. I obviously needed a female name with how I was dressed, so they gave me the name Charlotte. I soon found myself staying as long as I could at their home. I quickly became accepted as one of the girls after borrowing clothes from all of them. I needed some practice to get the voice right, but once I did, I could easily pass for a woman. They even convinced me to go out with them while dressed after a few days. Once I realized no one knew I was a guy, I had a great time. A few nights later, they introduced me to their manager while I was at the club with them wearing a stunning green silk dress and sky-high heels. He gave me a job as a substitute waitress for one of the waitresses who had twisted her ankle because he was so impressed. Going out dressed in the evenings was one thing, but at first I wasn't sure I could handle being approached by customers all the time. The girls quickly persuaded me. The supervisor and I eventually came to an agreement that I would try out the following night and see how I did. After hearing the good news, the girls took me out for a haircut and manicure the following day. For a guy, my hair was pretty long, but they had the hairdresser cut it into a very cute bob. Since I assumed I wouldn't have to wear a wig while working, I wasn't overly concerned at the time. It wasn't until much later that I realized there was no way I could comb my hair into a more masculine style and that I would now have to always be a girl— Additionally, they took me shopping so I could buy a few outfits of my own and stop borrowing from them. My heart was in my mouth that evening as I put on my uniform for the first time. I really had no idea what I was getting into. I adored how feminine and defenseless the uniform made me feel, but I wasn't sure how I would handle the attention it would draw. The girls praised my appearance and encouraged me, but I made a lot of stupid errors with my first few clients. As I followed orders, many hands were on me, but I learned to brush them off. I was exhausted by the end of the night. I wasn't used to wearing stilettos for that long. 
but I had to admit I was eager to repeat the experience. The manager concurred, so I signed up for the following 10 days. Going back to the hotel in a dress was really strange because no one seemed to realize I was a guy. As the first week came to an end, I quickly became accustomed to sleeping until noon and working at the club until the wee hours. I then realized how much I would miss it. Ramon, a tall, attractive man who already knew the majority of the other girls, entered at that point. It turned out he was a businessman and he spent the majority of the night chatting with me because I couldn't take my eyes off of him. Caroline laughed when I asked her about him and said that he had been out with some of the girls and was a bit strange. But when I returned, he asked me if I would join him for a drink after my shift ended, so it was clear that he was interested in me. I was so excited that I hurried through the rest of my work while the girls laughed and made fun of me for pulling off such a major coup. I borrowed a little black cocktail dress from Susie since I had worn sweatpants and jeans to work that day, and Ramon and I went out for drinks. I would have done anything he asked after about five minutes. I thought his stories were so interesting that I couldn't stop listening. After a while of dancing, he leaned over and asked me if I wanted to go back to his house because his car was outside. I was completely shocked when I saw his car. It was a huge limo with a bodyguard in the front, so it didn't take much to convince me. He showed me the bar as we settled into the back. It sounds really weird to say, but before that, I had never even thought about guys. After a few drinks, though, I kissed another guy for the first time, and Ramon and I soon had a wild night together. Looking back, it seems like a logical move. Given everything that had recently occurred to me, I felt completely at ease playing the role of the girl who was trying her hardest to please. I experienced my second shock of the evening when we got to his house. It was a sizable mansion with guards at the gate and its own grounds. Ramon covered me as we stumbled through the front door. He quickly located my dress zip. I was having a lot of trouble with his shirt's buttons because the girls had given me fake nails and I couldn't hold on to anything. But eventually, we were both able to get off everything and we enjoyed our time together spending the entire night experiencing new things. I instantly turned into his sissy after that. The following morning when I woke up, I initially believed it had all been a dream until I noticed him lying next to me. When I entered the club, the girls gathered around me and demanded to know what had happened. Obviously, I didn't tell them everything, but they were all aware of what had taken place. Everyone found it to be hilarious. That evening, Ramon arrived early and was very attentive. After my shift, we went out once more and had a great time. My final night at the club was the following day, and Ramon promised to let me go out with the girls afterward, but he also wanted to go out to dinner with me the next night. I arrived back at my hotel really late, and at 8 a.m. I heard a knock at my door. John, Ramon's driver, was there. He gave me two packages and instructed me to put on everything in the bags and be ready for dinner at 7 p.m. After he left, I looked and discovered a stunning full-length white evening gown with spaghetti straps, a low front, and a straight skirt with a split up, one side almost to the waist. A corset, knickers, stockings, and five-inch spike heels were also present. I prepared for my date with Ramon for the majority of the day, beginning with a lengthy, indulgent bubble bath and a second shave to ensure that I was completely hair-free. I finally managed to get into the corset and zip up the dress. At precisely 7 p.m., John knocked on my door once more and I got up to leave. He hadn't really acknowledged me before, but when he saw me, he grinned widely and said, Oh, you looked great. I grabbed a wrap because I felt a bit exposed. John took it out of my hands right away and informed me that Ramon had given me very specific instructions. Only the clothes that had been given to me were to be worn. Needless to say, I attracted a lot of attention as I walked out of the hotel. I even made someone whistle like a wolf. John simply grinned while directing me to the car. Ramon greeted me after arriving at the restaurant and standing up. I flushed deep red as I felt his eyes all over me. Ramon kept complimenting me on how beautiful I looked throughout dinner. He promised to surprise me at the very end, but first he wanted to see my level of loyalty. 
I was instructed to go to the ladies' room, take off my underwear, and give it to him. I was so under his spell at that point that I just did what he said without asking why. As I realized Ramon had once more shown his complete mastery over me, I experienced a small thrill. Ramon told me his surprise when I sat down. He wished for me to relocate into his home because I was currently jobless. He would give me pocket money in exchange for my availability whenever he needed me. He informed me that his staff had packed all of my belongings and paid the hotel bill while we were eating. I was going home with him that night, and he had no consideration for the possibility that I might not want to go with him. I thought about how only a few short weeks earlier, I had been just another guy as we drove back to the house. I was now being driven to the home of this man who had just claimed ownership of me while dressed as a stunning woman. I was astonished that my fantasy had actually come true and that I had no idea where it was going or any power over what was happening. Ramon spent the majority of his time traveling for work, so I often found myself alone for three to four days before spending the next 24 hours with him nonstop. Despite the fact that I didn't have any pants or flat shoes, he had sent someone shopping to make sure my wardrobe was well stocked. One day, about a week later, Caroline and Susie came to visit me, and they were amazed at how feminine I looked. It was also clear that there was no way Ramon's staff would let me leave the compound. Everything would be brought in for me. Ramon called to let me know he would be home in a few hours while we were all laughing and chatting. I was allowed to wear more comfortable clothing while he was gone, but when he was around, he preferred that I look as stunning as possible. The loose summer dress I was wearing was to be taken off, and I was to put on a white blouse, a short black leather miniskirt, sheer stockings, and four-inch strappy sandals instead. Naturally, the girls made fun of me and told me that I was a good little wife for doing as my husband instructed. He pulled me to him and kissed me, delighted to see the girls there. He started teasing right away, but I didn't care. The girls found everything to be hilarious. The weirdest thing might have happened a few weeks later, just before I was supposed to go back to the UK. Ramon was a member of a local dominant club. Most of the group's members controlled their sisses to varying degrees, and one woman who owned a home in the countryside had made the decision to wed her live-in, sissy maid. I was one of the bridesmaids because Ramon offered to be one. On the wedding day, I experienced some of my best jitters ever as I changed into my dress. Full-length silk dress with a fitted bodice and a straight skirt was what I was donning. Ramon made arrangements for a hairdresser to visit that morning because my hair was much longer by this point. By the time he was done, my hair had been teased into a very fancy style and was adorned with flowers. I discovered the bride and the other two bridesmaids there when we arrived at the house. While the guests drank excessively and awaited the ceremony to begin, we were locked up in a room by ourselves. They told me numerous tales about how their masters had treated them, and I came to the conclusion that what Ramon had put me through was relatively minor in comparison. Even worse, Jane, the bride, had to serve dinner to two of her ex-girlfriends who her mistress had located while dressed as a Victorian maid. She had been told she couldn't speak during the meal unless it was in French. I was questioned about Ramon. When I realized how ridiculous that was, I stopped myself from objecting and telling them Ramon was not my master. It was obvious that Ramon owned my body and soul after everything he had made me endure. I had never questioned or objected to any of his orders, and I couldn't see why I would now. He transformed me into a submissive, feminine creature, whose only objective was to make him happy in a matter of short weeks. The ceremony was held outside in the garden on a beautiful sunny day. The only issue here was that our heels kept burying themselves in the grass. A magician had been hired to provide entertainment for the guests after the ceremony. While Jane was forced to put on a gold lame bikini and heels and serve as the magician's assistant, the bridesmaids were forced to serve drinks. The poor girl was sawed in half, made to vanish, and sealed inside a box that the magician later filled with swords. The bridesmaids were summoned by Jane's mistress into a spacious bedroom at the top of the house after we had finished serving dinner. We were told to change into the three cheerleader dresses made of cotton in the colors 
gold, white, and red that were on the bed. We then put on track shoes and braided pigtails in each other's hair. Mistress got out some leg irons and tied us all together. Then she put collars around our necks and locked them. Each collar was connected to the others by a short piece of chain. Once we were safely fastened, Mistress led us back downstairs as we shuffled behind her. She halted in front of one of the dining areas and rang the doorbell. She stopped in front of one of the dining rooms and tapped on the door. When we walked in, our owners were sitting around a big, white-clothed table and playing cards. This is where Ramon waved at me and pulled out a chastity cage. Now it was really time to become his sissy. Let the fun begin. Thanks for watching. The rest won't be able to be shown on YouTube. Check out Patreon for more.